All right, so on Friday, we talked about logs. We revisited logs, right, because it should have been something we saw in Algebra 2. But the first thing is, you know, like there's one, there's more than one way to do these. So depending on how your brain sees it, you may not see it exactly the way we do it, but as long as you get to the same answer at the end, it's okay. You, I said your goal was to try to train yourself to almost do these mentally, right? I could take something like L log of base 6 of 36, set it equal to x, convert it into exponential, change the base, and go through the whole process, okay? But really what you want to start to train yourself to say is what do I raise the little number, that base, by to get to the big number, which would be what here? Two. That's the whole answer, okay? The quicker you can identify those things and the quicker you see it, the better off it would be, okay? For two, that's LN. We're going to come back to that because we didn't finish the notes for, two, for LN. For the second two, which is really three, okay, identify the domain range, asymptote, and x-intercept. So now we're dealing with graphing logs. We said the first thing that we would do is change the f of x to the y. Then we're going to convert this into exponential. So the 5 picks up the y, drops off the log, leaving the x plus 4. And then I would subtract the 4. So I have 5 to the y minus 4 equals x. And then with logs, we plug in for what? y. So I would get 5 to the negative 1 minus 4, 5 to the 0 minus 4, and 5 to the first minus 4. 5 to the negative 1 is 1 fifth minus 4. That's negative 3 and 4 fifths. 5 to the 0 minus 4 would be 1 minus 4, that's negative 3. And 5 to the 1st minus 4 is 5 minus 4, which is 1. Those are the x coordinates. So negative 3 and 4 fifths, negative 3 and 1. The other thing I want to get from my initial equation is the asymptote, right? How do I find out where the asymptote is occurring? Good. Whatever is here, I'm going to set equal to 0, and I get x equals negative 4. So that's where my vertical asymptote is. It's also going to impact my domain, right, because that's a shift. So x equals negative 4 is a vertical line that runs through negative 4. The coordinate points are negative 3 and 4 fifths and negative 1, negative 3, 0, and 1, 1. And then I make my little curve that runs close to without touching the asymptote. And I point my arrows in each direction. So what's the domain on this function? Good. Negative 4 to positive infinity parentheses on both. What's my range? Good. All real numbers, which is true for all logs. And your x-intercept, I can either get from the graph or go to my t-chart, grab that middle term, which would be negative 3, 0. Questions on either of those questions, number one or the graph. We're going to have to where we left off on Friday, which is the end of the log functions focusing on ln now, okay? So ln is a natural log. The log function with base e is called the natural logarithmic function. Remember, e is the natural base. So log base e is the same thing as ln. If you see one, you can interchange it with the other. Just like log by itself is the same thing as log base 10, log Base E is LN. The domain of that is all real numbers greater than zero, which means I cannot find the LN of zero or a negative number, just like with the log. So whatever's next to this base can never be zero and it can't be negative. If you hit that in the calculator, you'd get an error, right? It would yell at you and tell you whatever that non-real answer was the message that it says. It's the same for a log. So anytime you see LN, you're going to immediately replace it. Well, not necessarily always, Could you get but. That? Could you try again? No. It's almost like she's a student. She didn't understand. Yeah. Um, the LN can get replaced with log base E. Sometimes we replace it and sometimes we don't because it's easier not to. But you can replace it every time. 
We're using the calculator. Use the calculator to evaluate the function at the indicated value of x, and then round your answer to three decimal places. So we want three decimal places here. Now we're using the regular ln button. So we were using second ln for e, right? So I'm going to do 2 times ln of 12.5. I get 5.05145. I'm going to round to three decimal places. So I go to the four. It's less than five. It drops off, and my answer is 5.051. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nope. For the test. All right, now we're using, this is our mental math or our properties of logs that we, didn't need, we wouldn't need a calculator for. It says use the properties of natural logs to rewrite the expression, okay? So A says negative 5 ln of E. Think about what's happening here. What is ln? Log base E. So this is like saying log base E of E. What is that? That's just 1. It'd just be the x1 on the E, which is 1. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Because if the base and the x and the, what it's raised to is the same, we can cancel it. We keep the exponent. If it's the same and there's no exponent, it's just like an exponent of 1. Yes. So if that was negative 5 plus ln of e, you would need to do negative 5 plus 1. It doesn't cancel out and make it 0. Does that make sense? Because we're multiplying it this time, it didn't matter. But if you were adding those numbers or if there was an exponent on the e, it matters. You keep the exponent, okay. which without an exponent there, the exponent is 1, not 0. So just be careful. Yeah. Yeah. So if that was negative 5, if it said negative 5 plus ln of e, this would be negative 5 plus 1, which is negative 4. All right, B is the reverse, right? The base is E. You can rewrite that. This would be E to the log base E of 7. And when the base on both the exponential log and the base are the same, we, again, cancel it out and we keep what's next to it. So this is just 7. The more comfortable you get with the logs and the LNs, the easier that's going to be, you maybe get to the point that you don't have to rewrite it as log base e, you just know. Like if I just had ln of e to the 10th, what's my answer? 10, okay? You don't have to always rewrite it as log base e. Okay, then we're gonna graph ln. So think about we're basically just graphing log base e, which would be really close to graphing log base three because e is 2.7, okay? So we're going to rewrite this as log, well, y equals log base e of x minus 3. Convert it to exponential so the e comes over and picks up the y. And then add the 3. So e to the y plus 3 equals x. And I plug in for y. So I'd get e to the negative 1 plus 3, e to the 0 plus 3, and e to the first plus 3. So e to the negative 1 is 0.378, so on, plus 3. That's 3.4. We're going to round our graphing to the nearest tenth. This would be 1 plus 3, which is 4. And this would be 2.7 plus 3, 5.7. Where's my vertical asymptote? Good. X equals 3 is the vertical asymptote. So right. So then I plot 3.4 and negative 1. 4, 0, 5.71.
my vertical asymptote is at x equals 3. My domain starts at 3 and goes to positive infinity. My range is all real numbers because ln is just a log. And my x-intercept comes from my graph or the center point on my t-chart, which was 4, 0. No, there is none. So the, the y-intercept will happen on the exponential functions. The x-intercept happens on the... I mean, there could be one, but there's none this time. If that was shifted left and it crossed through the y-intercept, then there's a y-intercept. But for this one, there's not. All right, what's one way to do this? Because again, I'm going to tell you that there's more than one way to do this. And after we learn today's lesson, I would say you can even bring in another way to do it. But what's one way to do 2 ln of 1 over e to the 5th? What happens when you bring the e to the top? The exponent becomes negative. So I get 2 ln e to the negative 5. Then what? Good. And it's just negative 5. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Correct. That's like log base e of e to the negative fifth. And that would cancel to give you just the exponent. So it doesn't cancel out completely, but it leaves you with the exponent. All right. 3, 3 is properties of logs. So we're going to learn how to expand and condense. We're going to learn how to change it to 1 to 1 to solve. We're going to learn how to do change of base, which is finding the log when it's not base 10 or base e. And that's where it starts. So let's just say I said find log base 3 of 7. Okay? Well, that, to do that, we do what's called change of base. No matter what the number here is, well, no matter what the base is on the log or the large, and by large I mean physical size, not necessarily value, to rewrite that, you can rewrite it as log of the big value over log of the base. So the base always goes to the bottom. So think little number always goes to the bottom, base, bottom, okay? So if I had log base 3 of 23, I can rewrite that as log base 10, which is on our calculators, of 23 over log base 10 of 3. That would be my common log. So it's going to say rewrite it as the ratio of common logs, and that's log base 10. And then it's going to say rewrite it as a ratio of natural logs, and that's ln. So I can also write it as ln of 23 over ln of 3. And then you can enter either of those in the calculator, and you get 2.85. I mean, it rounded 2.85. So you'll actually get, so if it was ln of 23 divided by ln of 3, it's 2.8540493. That's what the full number is, okay? But no matter if you do it as log base 10 or ln, you'd get the same answer. Not on all calculators. Yeah. So on the quiz, it's going to tell you to rewrite it as ratio. So you rewrite it as the ratio, and then you can get it either way. Yep, smaller as in like physical size, so the base, um, not necessarily the value. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can you always count You can either do 10 or you can do ln because that's log base E. Yep. All right, so this one says rewrite the log as a ratio of A, common logs, and then B, natural logs, then use the calculator to evaluate the log and round it to three decimal places. So this time I have log base 8 of 5, Common logs would be log of what in the top? Five. five, good, over log of eight. Natural logs is ln of five over ln of eight. So ln of five divided by ln of eight, and I get 0 0.7739, so this is four. And it wouldn't matter if you did log of five, as long as you have to make sure you close those parentheses, divided by log of 8 or ln, you get the same exact answer. So 
So this is called change of base, and this is something that you'll use when we get to like an expression in which the bases are not the same. Like if you can't rewrite it so it's one to one, we'll use these to solve. All right, now three properties of logs. So we're gonna use these in two directions. One is condense and one is to expand. For these, the ones on this slide, we are expanding. You're going from one log to multiple logs. That's how you know you're expanding. So the product property says that if I have a log of a product, I can split it up by adding those together. Sure. If I have the log of a quotient, which means fraction or division, I can split it up by subtracting them. And if I have a log with an exponent, so the power property, that exponent bumps to the front of the log. Yep. Which one? So think about why these are the way they are. They're all based on exponential functions, right? So if I were to multiply two things that have an exponent, two bases with an exponent, what do I do with the exponents when I condense them? Add them. So when you're multiplying, you add. When you have two base, two exponentials, one over the other, so you're dividing, and I want to condense them, I subtract the exponents, thus the subtraction. And if I was to do something like x squared raised to the third, so the power to a power, what do I do with those? Multiply. So it's the same concept. That's where these come from, okay? When we add, it's multiplication, or reverse multiplication is add. When we divide, it's subtraction. And when we raise the power to the power, it gets bumped to the front. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is it says use the product rule to expand. So we're expanding. Eventually, it's just going to say expand or condense, and you got to know by looking at it. Obviously, if the log is only written once, we're going to then expand it. And if you saw multiple logs, you would be condensing it. But for A, this is log base 3 of 9 times 5. So what happens when I'm multiplying and I expand it? becomes addition. So this would be log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of 5. Can I simplify either of those logs? Which one? Log base 3 of 9 becomes what? 2. What do I raise 3 to to get it to be 9? That's 2. The log base 3 of 5 we're going to leave. So these will always be exact. You won't use your change of base on these. They'll, get, they'll stay that way. Because 3, right? If I rewrote that log base 3 of 9 equals x log 3 of x equals 9. 3 to what power gives me 9? x is 2. The difference is we don't want to have to do that every time. So you got to ask yourself, is there something I can raise the base to to get it to be the larger spot? And the answer is, yeah, I can square it. So it becomes 2. Yep, you would leave it just like this. No, these answers will be... Well, the only time that you're going to use your calculator is when it says to round, which is going to be on something that like you're raising e to the power. Like if you're graphing with e or ln, you're going to use your calculator. The interest problems where you're dealing with money, you're going to use your calculator. And the change of base, you're going to use your calculator. The rest of it, you don't need it. And those answers will say keep exact. So if you do use it, you're going to lose the points. All right, B, what's the base on that log? 10, okay? So if you want to write it, write it so you remember. This would be log base 10 of 1,000 plus log base 10 of x, or just log of x, because that doesn't matter. Can I simplify either of those? Yeah. yeah. What can I raise 10 to to get it to be 1,000? Mm, 3. Count the zeros. The 10 is the easiest just to count the zeros. 3 plus log, and you don't need the 10. You can put it there if you want. It doesn't make it wrong but it would just be log of x. Now I've got a fraction, right? So what happens here when I split it? It's subtraction. So this is log base 5 of 25 minus log base 5 of x. Can I simplify either of those? Yeah. Which one? Log. Good. Log base 5 of 25 is 2. Because it's a fraction. So multiplication is addition, subtraction, or division is subtraction. So
So here be careful because if it's just log base 10, I do not need the base on there. You can put the 10 there, but you don't need it. But if it is any other log, you cannot forget the base. That log base five has to be on there, okay? Be careful because you're gonna get multiple things when we start splitting up, there's multiple things. You wanna make sure you always carry that base. All right, D, ln of e to the third over eight. What's the first thing I could do? Subtraction, ln of e to the third minus ln of eight. Now what? Good, and leaves you just the exponent. So it's 3 minus ln of 8. Log base, because that would be log base e of e to the third. So the base on the log and the base on the exponential are the same. It wouldn't be 2? No. No. You're, are you talking about the 8 or are you talking about the 3? This would be rewritten as log base e of e to the third, right? So if you didn't know it and you set it equal to x, e to the x equals e to the third. Bases are the same. Yeah, okay. So I set the exponents equal. Yeah. Okay, so we're coming back to example two. This time it says approximate the log using the properties of logs given log base b of 2 is 0.3562. And log base B of 3 is 0.5646. So I don't know the value of B, which means I just have to rewrite these in terms of something with the 2 and something with the 3. Think product or fraction or exponent. So if I have log base B of 6, how could I rewrite 6 to either be a product, a quotient, or a power with 3 or 2 or both? That's okay. So log base B of 2 times 3, or 3 times 2, order there doesn't matter, right? That's the same thing. I just rewrote what was there. Now it was a product, which means, how do I split it up? Good. This would be log base B of 2 plus log base B of 3. And then in my instructions, I gave you what log base B of 2 is, so I substitute that in. And I gave you what log base B of 3 is, so I substitute that in. Add them together, and you get 0 Now look at B. How do I rewrite B? So you can bump negative 3 into the front. This is just one way to do it. Okay, so it would be negative 3 log base B of 3B. Good. Be careful when you do this next step because that negative 3 is going to both terms. So you do want to split it to become addition, but you want to make sure that negative 3 stays on the front because it's applying to both because both have the exponent, okay? Which is why at the beginning you could have distributed. Is that what you're going to ask? No, could you have just done, like, done separate, like, without, what I said, like, negative 3 log B3 plus negative 3 log Yes, you can distribute. Yep. Anything there you see you could simplify? Log B of B is what? And then log base B of 3 is 0.5646. Add the 1, negative 3 times 1.5646. And I get negative 4.6938. Hmm? That's okay. How'd you do it? Did you distribute the negative 3 from here? I got negative. I distributed. And then I canceled the B's. And I got negative 3. 
Oh, you distributed before. Like, okay, wait, hang on. Like but you distributed here. No, I did it before. Where? Like, I just, like, put it together. But, or, like, I got negative 3 log B of 3. Okay. Plus negative 3 log B of B. Okay. And then, I cancel the B. This, like, is 1. Yeah. Yeah. Is it what negative three? It's negative three times one. Oh, negative three. Sorry. Yes. And then it's multiplying it. So three times point five six four six, negative one point six nine three eight minus three. Same answer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm so wait, it doesn't matter. Like I could do that. Mhm. Mm and like literally from the beginning, I could have distributed a negative three to each of these. I could have done log base B of three to the negative three and then B to the negative three, then split them, then bump the exponent. So it doesn't matter which way you do that as long as it gets all of it. It all would have answered the same way. All right, look at four. What are you going to do first? This says, just says expand, right? Bump the 2 to the front. So this just becomes 2 log base 5 of 7, and that's all it wants you to do, okay? You can't simplify base 5 and 7. You're not going to use a calculator to make it rounded number. You're going to keep it exact. How about B? 4 can go to the front, or 4 could get distributed to both. It doesn't matter. But when you put the 4 at the front, be careful because you're going to eventually split this, right? It's going to become log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of x. You want to make sure that 4 is on the front of each of them. What's log base 2 of 8? 3. Mm hmm Yeah, I just wouldn't work that out. I'd bump it and then simplify it. But you could have done it either way. So most simplified there would be 12 plus 4 log base 2 of x. All right, what about C? What is the square root of x in exponential form? Good, so log of x to the 1 half. What happens with that exponent? Bumps to the front. You cannot leave a square root in a simplified answer. You have to make the exponent one half. Ln 6e to the fifth. What's one way to start it? Put the five at the front. Ln 6e. Then split it. Ln 6 plus Ln e. Then what? This is just 1, 5 times ln of 6 plus 1, distribute. Uh, 5 ln 6 plus 5. You could have distributed from the beginning. I could have made it ln of 6 to the 5th, e to the 5th, which is ln 6 to the 5th plus ln e to the 5th. This 5 bumps to the front here, 5 ln of 6, this just becomes 5. So you can do it either way. Like, whichever way your brain sees that, stick with it. Hopefully it sees it one of those ways. Yep. Yep. It gives you the exponent, though. It doesn't, like, go away. So, like, if it was just ln of e, it's not 0. It's 1. All right, see if you can do it.
All right, so for the first one, the, you can bump the two to the front and then separate them by adding the log base B of Z becomes log base, or the square root of Z, sorry. The log base B of Z to the one half, that one half gets bumped to the front of that log. So that's over here. When you distribute the two back in, it comes two times log base B to the X of X, but then two times a half, when I distribute this into this one, it cancels out. So I just end up with log base B of Z. So two log base B of X plus log base B of Z. Which one? On that one? Yep, so that's the first one. So I expanded it, and then the square root turns into an exponent of a half. The half bumped to the front of just that log, though, because that's the only one that had it. And then I distributed the 2 in, and the 2 times the half canceled out, so it's just log base B of Z on that one. Yeah, because you can keep going. It's not wrong, it's just not as simplified as it gets. So you get partial credit, but you will lose. What would happen if you made the one half exponent? And you left it there and then put the two on the Not as simplified as you can do go. No, no, like, oh. Okay, so like I put log B, B, and then half. Yeah. And then I put the two back as an exponent. No. So when you expand, you don't want any exponents. When you expand, you want to work the other direction. Like I got the answer right. I'm just asking if I put the two on the outside as an exponent, would it be? Like yes. Yes, but if you left the two in the process, no. But if you left the two as an exponent on the front, let's say, that's wrong. Yeah, you can't have any exponents. All right, B, you did log base. Well, the three went to the front. Log base, five of 25. Log base, five of Y. Log base, five of 25 became two. And then I distributed the three in. Three times two is six minus, that should be three, log base, five of Y. For C, Split it, ln of 10 minus ln of e, and ln of e is 1, so I just leave it as ln 10 minus 1. Does every single one that you cancel become 1? No, it becomes the exponent. So if there's an exponent on the e other than 1, does that make sense? Yeah. Then I keep that exponent. Wait, what was three? Just ln of 10 minus 1. Oh, yep. And then D, log base 9 plus log base square root 10. Square root 10 becomes 10 to the 1 half. 1 half can get bumped to the front of that. And or you can simplify log base 10 of 10 to the 1 half. Either way, it's 1 half. So this would be log 9 so plus 1 half. And that simplifies log base 10 to the 10. It doesn't stay as log as it's 1 half. It completely goes away. So log base 10 of 10 to the 1 half. This whole thing cancels and I keep the exponent. Yeah. Um, the, first one. the opposite direction is condensing. You are taking something that is a multiple logs and you're putting them together. It's the same exact property. It's just the reverse. The left side becomes the right side. The right side becomes the left side. It's the same exact property. So on the product property, when you're adding, you put it together, you would be multiplying. When you're subtracting, you put it together. It's division. And when, you're, when you have a number on the front, it becomes the exponent. So if, you're equa if your question has multiple logs, you're putting it together as one that's called condensing. If there's one log and you're separating it out, that's called expanding. The directions will get to the point where they say either expand or condense, and you get to choose. So multiple, put it together. Single, separate it out. All right, so now we're going the other way. There are multiple logs in my questions. That's one way I know. This time the actual instructions say to condense. So I'm going to take A and I'm gonna condense it into one. So that's addition, which becomes multiplication, log base two of four times the square root of eight. So for right now, we're just condensing. It doesn't say simplify, otherwise I would have simplified before I even got to that point. Oh, how do you do that? That would have been, the first one would be two. Right, log base two of four is two. This is actually two. But we just rewrote it. That's not the instructions this time. B says log of 6x minus log of 6. So the minus tells you to do what? Divide. So this would be log 6x over 6. And you can actually simplify that to be just log of x. Oh. 6 divided by 6 is 1. Yep. Because I can't, well, simplifying A would be super 
complicated because I'd have to rewrite eight as eight to the one, don't do that. Yeah, it will say simplify for numbers if it wants to, but six X over six, you'll always simplify that, yeah. All right, C, the two on the front will become the exponent on the nine. So this would be log base three of nine squared over, because it's minus 27. So I could go one step further and say this is log base three of 81 over 27. You can simplify that, but we're not gonna. Because the other way around, it would be simplified, yeah. D, ln of x minus 2 plus 5 ln of x. So the 5 is going to become the exponent on the x, and it's plus, so it's multiplication. This is going to be ln of x minus 2 times x to the fifth. And the order there can totally be switched, okay? It's multiplication, so the order doesn't matter. You do not need to distribute that, though. You can keep it exactly as it is. This is one of the things that are the most commonly made mistakes. So I just want to go over it real fast. If there's multiple terms in the denominator, everything in the denominator is going to get a minus. Okay? If there are multiple things in the numerator, everything in the numerator will get the plus. So this is expanding again because I only have one log, right? It could say expand or condense, and this is going to be expansion. I only have one log. So I would rewrite it as log base 9 of 81 minus log base 9 of x squared minus log base 9 of y to the third. So everything in the bottom gets a minus. So how do you put the one like, where the one? Then they would both be positive. Everything would be positive. So would be... Well, wait, I'm not done. So I'm going to bump these to the front. I'd get log base 9 of 81 minus 2 log base 9 of x minus 3 log base 9 of y and then this is two. So I think there's one in the homework that's the reverse of this. It's an actual expanded one that says like, I don't know, log of x plus two log of y minus, actually it's like the order's different. This would be a minus and this is a plus. Give me two seconds because you're gonna see this, right? In this one, shh, listen, shh. The, the one with the negative goes to the bottom no matter where it is in this location. So this one goes to the bottom even though the other two would stay in the top. So this would be log of x to the third, z to the fourth over y to the second. So the only one that goes to the bottom is the one that has the negative on it. And then anything that's positive stays in the top. Okay, this one, I'm gonna take this and plug it into the x. So this is log base 10 of 1,000. And then to try to figure out what to raise 10 to to get to 1,000, you just count the zeros, so this answer would be three. For number nine, it says 1 sixth log base six of 36. So this would be 1 sixth log base six of 36 is two. And then this simplifies to be 1 third. This was 12, so it may have looked different number-wise, but the concept's the same. The first thing you want to do is get the log on the side by itself. So I have to subtract the 2. I'd get y minus 2 equals negative log base 2 of x. And then you've got to get rid of the negative. So it becomes negative y plus 2 equals log base 2 of x. And now I convert. So 2 negative y plus 2 equals x. Then I plug in for the y. So 2, negative, negative 1 plus 2. 2, negative 0 plus 2. And 2, negative 1 plus 2. This becomes positive. So this is 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. This would be 2 to the 2nd, which is 4. And this is 2 to the 1st, which is 2. So then when you go graph it, I get 8, negative 1, 4, 0, and 2, 1. My horizontal, or my vertical asymptote, no, yeah, vertical, is at x equals 0. So my curve, and because it's negative, you should know it's going to flip upside down, right? Because it's reflected. 
So this actually runs this way, which means my domain is negative infinity. No, sorry, my domain is from zero to positive infinity. My range would be all real numbers. The vertical asymptote is x equals zero, and the y-intercept comes from the center of my t-chart, which is four zero. So it's whatever's next to the log. If log is by itself with x, it's just x equals 0. 